Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Steve Massinio and I am here today with Dr. Nancy Zare. We're here to present how to effectively connect with, motivate, and manage your employees without running an adult daycare center. And for those of you who are in business, which I assume all of you are, uh, you are here because you're dealing with employees and you understand that dealing with employees can be very frustrating, challenging, and uh, cause a, you know potentially a lot of headaches and a lot of instances where you're not always a happy camper dealing with them. And our goal here today is to give you some strategies uh, for being able to manage your employees in a way that makes your life easier, makes them happy, keeps them productive, and keeps them doing the things that make your business profitable, but also keeps them connected with you, all right, so that you have a, a good working relationship, something that you can cherish for a long period of time, and uh, allow you to keep that employee, those good employees for a long period of time because you know how to communicate with them. And so we're gonna get right into it today. Uh, Nancy, let me give you the, uh, a moment to go ahead and say hello here. Hi, this is Dr. Nancy Zier and welcome again. We're really glad that you're here and listening to this great material. Uh, hopefully you will, uh, we wanna thank you because we know that time is your most precious and valuable asset. Uh, money, you know, you can always get it back, but time, once you invest it, that's it. So again, thank you for taking time to be here. And be sure to take notes because you're going to find that we've got a lot of information. In fact, uh, some of our participants have told us it's like drinking from a fire hose. So take it away, Steve. Go for it. All right. So I'm going to start the presentation today by talking about how to hire and manage employees using systems and metrics. And what does that mean? Well, that really means getting a, a set of processes in place that are um, consistent, that are, are occasionally tweaked as necessary, but are also very trackable, that allow you to track the progress your employee makes throughout the, the process of, be, of, of becoming an employee, but also mean, uh, you know, remaining as an employee. And ultimately, of course, if you have to terminate them, you have a process for doing that as well. And it allows your business to be consistent in how you approach the management of your employees from a, a standpoint of, is their performance effectively growing your business? Is it producing toward your bottom line, your revenue goals and everything else? That's what we're trying to do here, set up systems that allow that to happen without you having to spend a lot of time with the employees and, and without you having to evaluate them on anything else but these important metrics and these important systems. So let's get right into it. So why should you listen to me? Well, I've been there, done that. I'm a multiple business owner. I have a very large physical therapy practice in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and another one in Sterling, Mass. I also own two fitness centers. And I am I oversee basically 30 employees at this point and have been utilizing these systems and processes that you're gonna learn about today in managing them. And these are not things that I've come up with. I'm not gonna take credit for them. I've learned these processes through my own business coaches and mentors over the years and have been able to successful, successfully implement them. Uh, and which is, I'll tell you, it has made my life a lot easier in managing my staff and connecting with my staff and creating a, a culture within my business that uh, people really like working for me. And really, we don't see a lot of turnover in our business, primarily because we have these processes in place and we've created a consistent culture, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, that keeps people there, um, regardless of what they're getting paid. I mean, you know, we are probably, if we look at it from how we uh, compensate our employees, we're very fair within the industry. Uh, could we do it more? Yes, but we don't necessarily have to because people like being there. Okay, and we don't have people say, you know, demanding raises or anything like that because they understand that they're being tracked based on performance metrics. And so they know when they deserve a raise and when they don't deserve a raise. And they also know that if they go anywhere else, they're going to miss out on the culture that we've created. And you're going to learn a little bit about that today in this process. So, um, you know, these, again, these are proven systems for keeping employees productive and happy. That's why they work. And, you know, you're going to be able to. Uh, ideally see the same results my clients are, are seeing by implementing these strategies. I've worked with a number of clients in my coaching business and they take these, these processes, they implement them, and they're very happy with the results they're getting as it, improve, it ultimately leads to an improvement in their bottom line. So let's talk about systematizing your uh, hiring process here. And so what I mean by that is you want to be able to hire 
on your company culture. You also want to be able to hire on references and you want to be able to hire on skill after that. Now, I have no idea why there's music playing in my background here, so I'm just gonna shut that down. Somebody's little iPhone is going off here and I don't know who it is, so I apologize for that, everybody. Give me one second. All right. It just shows so, you what kind of atmosphere you have created in well, your. Yeah, you know, I've got reggae music playing in the background, and it just you know starts on its own. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, it was somebody's uh, Amazon Kindle that they left on my desk, and it started playing reggae music. So there you go. It's the type of culture we have here in my facility. Sorry about that. Anyway, so we talk about hiring a company culture. What does that mean? It really means that you want to have an environment where people are going to like to work, and your environment that you create for your business is specific to you. And for my practice, I like to have an open, fun, engaging environment where our patients are feeling comfortable, they like coming to physical therapy despite the fact that they're in pain, and then our staff is a group of people that really gets along very well, that they appreciate each other, that they are able to even hang out with each other outside of work, that they are engaged with the, 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 each other's patient's care, in other words, that they're in tune with what they're doing for their patients, so that they can feed off each other, learn from each other, and continue to grow in their ability to serve our patient population on a regular basis. That's the culture that we have in, in my practice. And everybody's company culture is gonna be a little bit different, but you wanna make sure that you're hiring on culture first, because you don't wanna just hire somebody that's gonna come in with a different set of attitudes, a different set of beliefs, and try to plug them in because they happen to be highly skilled. That's still not going to fit your culture. It's actually going to create a strain on the culture that you've created, and it's going to create some negativity in the workplace as people may not be able to connect with that individual coming in. But it's like fitting uh, a square peg in a round hole. It doesn't necessarily work very well. So you really want to hire. I really believe you should hire on company culture first. So you have to be able to ask questions to the person that gives them gives you a sense of what they're all about. What 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 does it mean to be a, a you know, an employee doing the type of work that they're doing for, potentially for your company or for the, your industry or what have you. What is their, What are they passionate about? What are their ideals in terms of growth and, and so forth? Get a sense of what they're all about and, you know, and the answers and how they respond to you and how they interact with you is going to give you a lot of a good sense of whether they're going to fit into your culture or not. And then you want to move toward looking at their references. And I really strongly recommend that you, you take the time to review references and don't, and don't just do the, hey, how's, uh, you know, reaching out to a reference saying, hey, how, how did this person do? You got to get really get knee deep and ask questions of that person that you're getting a reference from that the questions are going to support whether or not this person is going to fit into your culture, your company culture. All right, you have to build, ask your, build your questions around your company culture and what your vision for your company is so that as you're asking this person about your potential employee candidate, that the answers they give you, give you green lights in your head that say, yeah, this person is gonna be a good fit for my company, okay? And then I like to advise people to hire on skill afterwards because skill, you know, if you, if, even if they have a baseline set of skills, if you have the right training processes in place, which we'll talk about in a little bit here, you can bring people's skill levels up. And a nice part about even hiring a, a person is less skilled than maybe your current your current staff, the good part is if as long as they fit in the culture, then that staff's gonna help bring them up, all right? They're gonna to wanna to help that person get better because they know they wanna keep that person around because they fit in the company culture. So it's gonna take the workload off of you. Additionally, with good training systems, you can increase people's skill levels, but you can't, you can't train culture, okay? You can't train a person to do, be a happy person or be uh, somebody that, like the rest of your team, you can't train that. You have to be able to find that first. And then you can, if, with the, if, if they have a, a base set of skills that you can build upon, it'll work much better for you. So as I was just saying, you can always train good employees who are motivated and happy to work for you. It's very difficult to train employees who don't get who you are, don't understand your culture, and don't fit in. Because they're just not going to feel good, and they're going to be less apt to be trained, and that's going to reduce their productivity, they're going to reduce their happiness, and ultimately, they may uh, end up being somebody who leaves your company, and once again, you have to start this whole process again, which is the last thing you want to do as, as a business owner when you have other things you want to focus on. So my 
recommendation in regards to that is to really hire slowly. Take your time with the hiring process. Don't just take hire people to fill a slot. Yes, you may be losing some productivity. You may be losing revenue because you don't have a particular person working, uh, you know, a, a particular position filled. But if you just try to fill that slot with the hopes of boosting your productivity and you've put it put in the wrong person, man, it's going to backfire on you. And you're going to have to go through this process again. And meanwhile, you're going to create strain and maybe some unease with the rest of your employees. And you're going to affect the culture of your company. And that's the worst thing you can do. You know, so you really want to take your time with the hiring process. Hire slowly. Don't rush through it. It's the worst thing you can do. Trust me. You'll end up wasting more time and energy trying to just, again, fit that square peg in a round hole uh, than you will by really trying to take your time to find the right person that's going to fit into the, the, the culture. And, and then obviously, there's somebody that you can, that's very trainable that you can bring into and train them the way you want to do things in your business. So let's talk about employee management once they've, they've started their job. You want to give everybody a title, okay? And a specific title too that really is around their strengths. Now, you may not be able to give somebody a title right away when they come into the role. Maybe they may have a, a title of like staff therapist, for example, if we're referring to physical therapy. And that's fine. It's very generic. There's a lot of staff therapists. But if you can add something to that um, to give them uh, – some objective, some importance to what they do within your company, that makes things a lot better for them. It makes them feel like you're empowering them a little bit, okay? It also will increase their performance and their efficiency because you've given them maybe a job specialization, a specialty for them to do, something that you know that they're good at, okay? So when you hire and add a title to somebody, you want to really do it based on what you know their strengths are. So if you know that somebody is strong and say engaging with clients or is a strong marketer and they could help you with your marketing efforts, then you could call them staff physical therapist slash marketing specialist. Okay, give them that extra piece, give them and then give them some focus within that piece that they can do because it'll feel make them feel like they're doing a little bit more, they're a little bit special, and they have this additional title which you know adds to their quote unquote rank. Uh, that's important for keeping an employee motivated and also giving them some things that they can do that they're going to be happy doing, okay? And that's going to only increase your productivity and the, the, the profitability of your business as well. And so in place your employees in, no, in roles that, that you know they will succeed, exceed in. And then what I mean by that is not just succeed, exceed, do exceptionally well. And you got to know you'll you'll know that by through the interview process. You'll know that through uh, communicating with them, asking them what are you good at. You'll be right up front with them because if you can get a sense of where their strengths are right from the get go, you can set up up for a long time uh, long term success in your business. And then you want to get into uh, what we call developing a position agreement with your staff. And this is a sample position agreement for one of our clinic directors in my physical therapy uh, practice. And what a position agreement does is it defines uh, an employee's responsibility. It sets a level of accountability for them because they're going to read this position agreement and they're going to agree to it. Ideally, you're going to have a conversation on these uh, key result areas, as you see on this position agreement. You're going to have an agreement on what the metrics are that they're going to be attract, uh, attracted by. So if you say to them, well, I want to see, have you doing 70 patients a week, and they turn around and say, well, you know, I'm really comfortable doing 70 patients a week. Can we agree on you know, my, my, my patient visit volume being 63 patients a week. And if you said, okay, that's reasonable, I can do that, you would put that as a standard for them to, to, for you to track by. So they've agreed to that number, and now you can hold them accountable for hitting that number on a regular basis. That's just an example. So what it does, the position agreement does is also gives you authority over them. Because you're, now you have a, a real template for tracking their performance by metrics. All these key result areas have some sort of time-oriented or goal-oriented number that you can track them by so that when you go do so on a quarterly basis, which is what I recommend, that you track them, you meet with them quarterly so that every quarter they're either meeting their goals or they're exceeding their goals. And if they're occasionally missing some of their goals, you can address it with them and say, hey, what can we do to help you uh, get better? The other piece is if it, you find somebody, you have an employee that's not meeting their goals across the board, they're, they're missing a lot of the goals, and you have to have that quarterly, first quarterly meeting and say, okay, what's going on? What is happening where you can't you know, meet the objectives that we set for you originally? 
you can see where the employee's at. And you'll also get a good sense of whether, you know, they're, they're the right fit or not at that point. The point is, if you have a, somebody that comes to you in a quarter or two quarters where they're just not meeting their, their standards, you'll see it. You'll see it. It's, been, it's documented. And you can bring it to the employee. But the nice part is you have every right then to start looking for another replacement. And I would highly recommend you do that. So the position agreement is a great tool for you. It's also a great tool for the employee to know where they're at. They can, if they're smart, they keep it open all the time. They know what their numbers are supposed to be. And if they have trouble, if they're a good employee, they're going to find out if they're not, if they're not hitting the numbers, they're going to come to you and say, Hey, you know, I'm having trouble this month. What's going on? How, how do I, how can you help? Can you help me get to my number? What can we do? What can I do better here? And that's a good a sign of a good employee that takes accountability for knowing their numbers using this as a tool and getting the, getting the help they need to make sure that they're getting their numbers. So that's really the power of a position agreement. And I highly recommend that everybody uh, put implements one uh, for their business. And the other piece is, you know, in order for them to hit their numbers is really you, initially you're going to have to have some really good training systems. Okay. You have to have defined training systems that they can essentially position themselves to train themselves into the role. Uh, you with, with less oversight from you or one of your key staff managers. So you want to create systems that are essentially automated to some extent, uh, but also give you an opportunity or your staff an opportunity, your management staff that is an opportunity to test the people, test the new employees and make sure that they are understanding how the systems work and how the processes in your business work and that they're moving along at a, at a good pace so that uh, they're, being, they're being productive and still getting the information they need to be successful in their job. And so if you can set up a training manual or a training online training video modules, whatever you want to do, having a training system for every type of employee that you have is super important because it's going to save you time for actually sitting there and training them on your own, which of course you don't want to waste time doing that. I mean, it's important. Don't get me wrong, but if you can have something do the work for you and then check in and make sure the progress is happening, you're going to be more efficient and you're going to be productive doing the things that help you actually build your business versus, you know, uh, spending too much time with a, an employee uh, that the, when you don't have a training system whatsoever. So we have training systems for our front desk staff, for, for uh, insurance authorization processes, for how to use our computer software programs. We have training systems in place for taking a new grad physical therapist and giving them the uh, educational processes and, and skill, clinical skills that they need to exceed and, and get to the same level as the rest of our training staff. So we have all those things defined, written down, and in modules that our, our new employees can take and utilize so that if you lose a key manager, it's not going to matter because you're going to have a training system in place that's going to help still train new employees. Okay, that's the beauty of this. And then finally, you have to have your tracking, everything you do and your employee does has to be tracked by metrics. Okay, if you're not using metrics to track the performance of your employees, you, you're essentially evaluating them on their personality or how they, they are in general. And that's not great because it gives them leverage to say, oh, I want more money. And you have no reason to really determine whether their performance is, you know, improving your bottom line. Okay. You have nothing, if you don't, you're not using metrics to track that, you're not going to know if they're really helping you or not. And so you don't want to put yourself in a position of evaluating somebody based on their personality because they may have a great personality, but behind the scenes, their numbers are terrible and that's not helping you grow your business. So you want to be able to, you know, having metrics in place will define their role, but it'll also um, you know, be able to give you an opportunity to track your financial investment in it. Are you getting the return on your investment in this employee that you brought on? And so it also determines their role acceleration, the role maintenance, or their role decline. Role acceleration, if they're exceeding or, or uh, their metrics on a consistent basis, the, the, the metrics you set in their position agreement, and you see it's improving your bottom line, then you can accelerate them into a, a, a higher level role within your company. If they're just doing role maintenance, they're just meeting their numbers, then they, they, you know, they may be one of those employees that just gets the standard minimum raise every year, and they're just happy doing that, but they're, at least they're meeting their numbers, and they still fit in the culture. It's all good. Or if they're not meeting the metric, their, their numbers at all, they're not staying up with it, they're not getting help when they, they're missing their position agreement numbers, that's a signal for role decline, meaning time to get rid of them, time to look for somebody else and uh, put somebody else in place uh, and, and go then go through what we call the termination process, okay? I love the, the I thought you'd like this termination terminator picture, I thought it was a good fit here. And so with the termination process, you have to have warning systems. And what I mean by that is, is a verbal and written warning systems in place. Now, your termination process starts in two places, okay? It starts with, right from the beginning when they're hired. 
And what I mean by that is you have to have a policies and procedures manual for your company. And you, you have to actually have processes in place where that new employee reads that policies and procedures manual, make sure they're not violating the standard policies and procedures of your company, and they sign off on understanding those policies and procedures. And then, of course, there's the position side of agreement side of things and that they understand that, you know, if they're missing their numbers in the position agreement, the agreement they sign off on, that you have these warning systems in place. So you start with verbal warning and then you go to a written warning. But no matter what you do with any warning process, you've got to document every, every conversation you have with a, an employee for misconduct or lack of performance. You have to document it whether you had a verbal conversation or a written conversation and you want to put that in their file. Because if you decide to terminate them and decide to let them go, you want them coming back to you with any sort of legal action, even in a state like Massachusetts where people are typically employees at will, okay? So it's especially important in Massachusetts when you talk about workers, um, unemployment insurance and so forth, where people will go and file for unemployment insurance even though you terminated them with cause, and they'll still get it. You wanna have everything documented so that you're not paying extra money to the state because they decided to file and the state just giving it to them because you didn't have supporting uh, paperwork that said they were, you know, they deserve to be terminated. Okay. You need to be able to have all that stuff written and put into place and it'll also protect you as a company. So I all recommend in terms of termination, if, you, if somebody does violates an egregious policy, something that is, you know, you know, is they shouldn't be violating, then you can terminate them right away with cause, write everything down. And as long as you have, uh, people supporting it and you, you have everything that you need in place, it shouldn't be a problem. But the point of all this is you obviously you don't want to have to terminate people. You want to be able to bring them and keep them on board. You want to have to hire somebody at the end of terminating because it just causes um, a lot more problems for you. But and so occasionally that's going to happen. So as Donald Trump would say, you're fired. Fire quickly. Don't hang on to those people. You know you said something is up. They're not meeting the numbers. They're causing problems. Get them out of there. I know it, it might be frustrating because you went through that process, but if you keep a bag, bad egg on too long, you're just going to be in for a world of hurt in your business. It's going to cause some cultural problems. It's going to cause some tension among your staff, and you don't want that. You don't want somebody else leaving because this person has been kept in your business too long and was not doing a good job. And then most importantly is you always want to be recruiting, okay? You always want to be looking for new employees, even at times where you don't need new employees. Because the more you get an employee, uh, potential employee database going, in other words, a tickler file of resumes and people that you believe would be a good fit for your company, if somebody does have to leave, at least you access that tickler file and call those people back and try to bring them back on board. Now, occasionally they'll have already found a job and that happens, that's fine, but if you're always recruiting and you're always keeping uh, people coming in and looking at your business and being enthusiastic about it, wanting a job at your facility, you're going to get those people occasionally that you call back at a later date. And even though they were working for somebody else, they want to come and work for you and they'll quit and do so. So don't stop the recruiting process. Yes, it's an investment of time and yes, it's an investment of money, but it's super important for you to uh, keep a consistent pipeline of potential candidates to work for you in your business. So Please, please do that. And a couple of strategies I use for recruiting include Indeed.com, direct mail campaigns to uh, potential candidates, as well as using Facebook ads and also putting notifications out in Facebook groups. I found uh, I've had a decent amount of success recruiting people that, that way. So, so that's really an overview of the systematization process for managing your employees. And now I'm going to transition my, this, this presentation to Dr. Nancy Zayer who is going to talk about communicating with style. So Dr. Zaire, take it away. Well, thank you, Dr. Steve Messinio. Uh, that was great information. And uh, Steve is all about managing by numbers. I'm all about communicating with style. Um, in other words, you need to match your employee style in order to communicate effectively. So as we get started, I have some questions for you. Are you looking to improve your communication as a manager? I mean, chances are you're doing a fairly good job, but yeah, maybe there's a room for growth. And what about stress? Is your stress level high? Because when you run an adult daycare center, I assure you, stress is hugely high. And would you like to know the secret for how you can deal with both? It's called a likeability. A likeability. 
A quick story here about Mike as a manager uh, at a company where I've been coaching. Uh, and Mike is basically a one note manager. Uh, it's got a big heart. He's very warm. He cares about people, which are qualities that you would like in a manager. But because he cares about people, he finds it very difficult to set limits, uh, to enforce limits, to uh, deliver bad news and let people know when they're not meeting standard. And so that one note is not serving him well. And the biggest mistake that most managers and owners make is that we have only one style for communicating. We're stuck. We're stuck in only one way of delivering information. And the best managers have the ability to shift and change according to the person they're speaking with. My goal is to help you expand your repertoire, to grow in your ability to uh, communicate. And I do that with the alike ability system. Now, some of you are saying, I've never heard this word, a likability, before, and that's because I coined it, and as the author of that word, I get to define it, and it means a skill that raises the perception of being alike the other person. It's a skill, and a skill means that you can learn it, and I have become very good at teaching it. It's a skill that makes other people feel, we're alike, you get me. And as a result, they relax and communication is improved. So I'll give you a bit about my background. Um, I majored in psychology at Boston University, got both a master's and a doctorate at Boston College. Um, I've been on the faculty of a couple different universities uh, and, and been tenured. Uh, also been certified in adult learning through Peak Potentials and certified in a sales training. Uh, I also directed an employee assistance program through Mount Auburn Hospital for many years where I helped implement uh, programs to help managers deal with what's called troubled employees, employees who are not performing well in the job. So I have worked directly with hundreds of managers around almost any issue that you can name. Um, you know, from minor issues about attendance to more major issues about threatening violence or being violent in the workplace. The likability system is five steps, uh, and the step number one is to define the fact that there are four communication styles. And you may already be familiar with the idea that there are four personalities uh, based upon things like Myers-Briggs or DISC, there are over 200 of these kinds of systems, animals, colors, objects. I'm going to talk about the lens system. And as you can tell, lens is a four-letter word, hence it's an acronym. Um, I like to use the lens system, which I uh, created, because of the fact that I can talk about looking through the lens of the other person. So lens, as I said, is an acronym. The L in lens is for learning, or you can think of it as green. The uh, E in lens is energizing or red. The N in lens stands for networking or gold. And finally, the S in lens is for stabilizing or blue. Those are our four styles. And let me start off by talking about your employee who is communicating from the learning style. Um, when they communicate, and when they're thinking about things in the workplace, everything to them has to be practical. Practical means it solves a problem. That's what makes them think. That's what makes them communicate. They're talking in terms of things being practical, making sense, being logical. They also communicate from the point of view of things being utilitarian. Uh, there has to be a useful, long life to what they're doing or to a solution. That's something that gets their attention. What motivates them are two things, information and solutions. These are big readers. Uh, they love to uh, become experts and uh, develop competence in a particular area. So they are gobbling up information. They're always improving their minds and trying to learn more. And these are problem solvers. They, they are motivated by looking for solutions. Uh, again, they often find problems that you don't even know that are there, and they propose solutions because that's how their minds work. As an employee, you're going to find that they're very independent. 
Uh, that means that sometimes it's hard to corral them. It's hard to get them to go along because they can be very contrarian. In fact, they can be very unconventional in the way they dress or sometimes in their manners or the way they speak. Um, there can be an abruptness to them. In other words, they walk into a room and start talking without a greeting and also can just turn their back and leave without saying goodbye because um, when they're finished, they're finished. So those are some of the things that could, you, could bug you or other members of the workforce. Uh, they're big thinkers. And of course, this is they excel in thinking and they really add that dimension to your work group. Uh, and you'll find that they ask deep, penetrating, provocative questions. They want to know why. And those questions can sometimes be so important to help us uh, leap and uh, see things in a different way. But sometimes they, they're questioning us, especially around a new policy, can feel like they're being a very aggressive and not getting along. Your energizing employee, they're guided by being trendy. Uh, they are seeking to be modern first on the cutting edge, something no one else has ever done. So they're always kind of innovating and, you know, wanting to be number one, pick me. Um, and they're looking to be outstanding. They want to stand out from the rest of the crowd, uh, be noticed, be different. They do it by the clothing they wear or body piercings or, or body art or other ways that they let you know, look at me, I'm different. What are they motivated by? Adventure and experience. This is a person who plunges in with gusto and they, they are excited, they are um, wanting to perform and do things and uh, they're very much driven by action. So that adventure, that thrill, that excitement, this is what motivates them. And again, if you offer them something new that's not been tried before, this is the employee who will thrive under those conditions. Impulsive, spontaneous, they love it. They're driven to compete and especially to win. They want to be number one. They want to come out best. As I mentioned, they want to be outstanding. But to people around them, they may be perceived as cutthroat because they do whatever it takes. They're very persistent, uh, absolutely want to win. And other people may feel like, wow, they're cutthroat and they're not very caring about uh, the other people in the workplace. This is a multitasker. Uh, that, remember, they're grabbing gusto, they're jumping in, they're doing it all. They're full of action, they don't wait, impulsive, doing a hundred things at once. So as a result, they're coming late. Uh, be aware that they overschedule, they don't allow enough time between tasks, and consequently, you may find them arriving late. Your networking employee is guided by things that are casual, down to earth. They don't want to be on any ceremony, no pretenses, you know, informality. That's what they're all about. And to be comfortable. They, their clothing is comfortable. You know, they have a very laid back, kind of optimistic, sunny disposition. It's all about creature comforts, getting along, singing kumbaya. They're motivated by connecting with other people in an authentic way. They're looking for a relationship with you as well as their coworkers or their patients, clients, customers. They want to form a connection, a bond. This is what means the most to them. This is what gets them uh, you know, excited and gets them happy in the workplace. Because they're always trying to connect, 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 they're very talkative. They can talk your ear off. You know, because they want to relate, they want to get to know you, they want to get to know others, but that can lead to their being unproductive. They don't like paperwork so much, and so, you know, they can be talking rather than doing. They don't like conflict, and they want to connect with people, so consequently they avoid situations that are tough to talk about, tough to deal with setting limits. This is not the person who feels comfortable in that way. Your stabilizing employee, they're motivated by safety and security. That's what they're striving. They want to have a safe, secure 
workplace, which means it's structured. Step one, step two, step three, it's predictable. They have a system, they can follow it. They, they love that kind of thing. When they make choices, it, they're guided by things like classic. Classic, it never goes out of style. You know, it's very tasteful. You know, it, 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 throughout the decades, you can count on it. And conservative. This is not the person who wants to take risk. They're risk adverse, very conservative, fall back on tradition, want things to stay the same, very reluctant with any kind of changes, whether the change is technology, the change is personnel. This person has trouble with change. The stabilizing individual tends to be a great manager, but they tend to micromanage. They can't, they often don't delegate as well. They always think that they can do it best. Uh, so they have difficulty letting go or giving it up to others. They kind of suck up all sorts of responsibility to the point where they can be overwhelmed. So they do tend to micromanage and that leads to a lot of rigidity. They have very much black and white thinking, you know, all or nothing, follow the rules, do what's said. And on one hand, that's great. And on the other hand, that means that they don't take into account outside circumstances. Well, Steve, that was quite a lot that you and I have uh, shared about, our, about how to manage employees effectively without running an adult daycare center. And there's so much more we have to share as well. Yeah, certainly, Nancy. I think that... Uh... The information that we have covered today, it just is the uh, tip of the iceberg. And really, there's a lot of, a lot more behind it that, unfortunately, we don't have the time to go through today. Uh, but we do have something special we've put together for anybody attending and watching, viewing this presentation. And it's called the Intensive Employee Management Course. Right. And what it, in, when you take this course, you're going to be able to stop hiring losers. And by losers, we don't mean that you're deliberately going out seeking the wrong individual, but without those systems in place, you are losing time, you're losing effort, you may be losing the goodwill of other employees because the person that you hired doesn't fit in and it's costing you and your organization. Absolutely. And you know, this whole process that we're going to be teaching in this course is really getting setting up so that you you speak so your employees will listen all right it gets you set up to be able to communicate effectively with your employees gets them to be able to communicate effectively with you so you have an understanding of each other in a way that allows you to be uh, create a culture continue to build on that culture that you want for your business and pr promotes the teamwork that you want so that you can continue to see the bottom line results for your business and get people engaged in that process of building your business and being on board with it for a long period of time. And of course, at the bottom line, we do want to make employees mind. We want them to mind because we've spoken the language that they respond to best and we set out the numbers and they've agreed to performance uh, standards. And this is the best way to have people mind, not because I told you so, but because of the fact that it's clear to everybody, here are the expectations, we both signed off, we both agree, and that, that gives you a, a tremendous amount of power when it comes to uh, managing employees effectively. Absolutely. And you know, going back to what I talked about earlier, managing staff systematically, you know, having a system in place, there's a reason why we have systems. It makes our ability to do our job and makes the employee's ability to do job much easier. When you don't have systems that are trackable, that are uh, easy to implement, that, that are manageable, then you have chaos in your business. And chaos in your business causes delays in growth, uh, it causes uh, productivity to go down, and it causes uh, a negative impact on your bottom line. So when you have good systems in place, including employee management systems, everything works appropriately for your business and you can continue to grow and also give you more time to focus on the important things in your business uh, to allow you to see the results you want from it. 
And as a result, when you have systems in place, starting with hiring, starting with employee handbooks, you're going to prevent future performance problems. It just stands to reason that if you have uh, gone through the, these steps and you have these tools in place, that uh, everybody is clear on the expectations and knows what to do. And that's going to prevent a whole lot of heartache, uh, you know, as well as those problems. And ultimately, what we're trying to do here is help you increase your staff's productivity. And it obviously, then allows you to profit effortlessly, okay? When your staff is product, uh, productive, when they're happy, when they're engaged with the process that you've put in place for selling your products or services, you win. It impacts your profits immensely in a positive way. It gets them making the sales process, for example, or the customer service process that much easier. And that's ultimately going to benefit you as time goes on when you have a good staff working together, being productive, being happy, and being engaging with your uh, customers coming in. And that allows you to determine raises objectively. You know, too often we're in a situation where we don't have the information in front of us as to how that employee has uh, uh, impacted our business. And so it becomes a matter of personality. You know, do we like them? Do they like us? You know, are they well liked by staff? No, when you actually have systems in place, you're able to see how this person has contributed uh, to your uh, organization and you can reward them appropriately. And so we want to help you see beyond the management blind spots. We want you to avoid the, the, obstacle, uh, the unseen obstacles that come away with, that come to a lot of small business owners who don't have these processes in place and allow you to see every aspect of your business, especially when it comes to dealing with people in your business. And those people are the people that are also the face of your business in a lot of respects in, in terms of what, what your customers see. So avoiding these fine spots, avoiding unseen, um, you know, potential problems with uh, dealing with employees is super important. And that's what this, this course that we're uh, putting, we put together for you uh, is going to cover. And here's what I love the most, and that is that you will gain confidence and clarity. Again, it speaks so directly to the countless number of, of uh, managers that I've worked with, you know, who, you know, they go home at night and what ke keeps them awake and what, you know, what keeps them from sleeping successfully is they go over in their mind what happened, you know, at the workplace between themselves and another uh, employee. And this is going to give you the confidence to know that you, you, what you say and what you're doing is right on target, that you're following a documented, proven system uh, that gets results and you'll have clarity in terms of taking action and knowing how to uh, work with each person, uh, respecting them as individuals, but at the same time holding them accountable. So guys, this intensive course that we put together, it's four 60 minute sessions on the web, very much like we've done here today. We're gonna be able to record every session. So if you, for some reason, cannot make one of the sessions, you'll have a recording that you'll have access to as part of the course and you, you can review over and over again until you're able to implement the processes we teach in each session for your business. We're also going to have a private Facebook group for anybody who attends this course and allow you to connect with other business owners, share ideas for uh, employee management processes, and also share your experience in implementing the stuff we teach in the course and allow us to give you feedback as we go along specific to your business so that you can be successful with taking the information we share throughout the course and putting into play for your business. Yeah, I, I want to underscore what Steve just said because our desire is to see you succeed, to see you have the confidence, the clarity, the skills, the know-how to uh, work with your uh, team and to uh, create a productive, profitable, and you know happy workplace. So guys, we can easily charge you $997 for this course. This is something that we're confident is worth way more than the price point you see on the screen. But here's the thing. We want you to have great success immediately. We want you to feel like you're, you can make this process for investing in this course an absolute no-brainer. We don't want you to have to worry about the financial impact of investing in this course. We want you to be able to say, yep, I should do this right away. I should get involved. I can take this process 
and then implement it so that I can have a, a more productive, happy group of employees that fit into my culture, that allow me to be more profitable. So we're not looking to uh, make it hard for you, uh, make this decision hard for you. We actually wanna take this price and, and reduce it significantly so that you'll make this process of investing in this course a no-brainer. And so for a limited time only, all right, we're going to offer this course for $347. That's a huge discount. But here's the thing. The, this offer expires Friday, November 10th at 5 o'clock. Okay? We want you to take action now. If you don't take action now, you obviously don't get the benefit of the discount here. But here's more importantly, you're not taking action to improving your business. So we want to make this a no-brainer. This is why we're offering this course at this price for a limited time only. Get involved now. Take advantage of what we have to offer. Plus, when you do, we have a special bonus that we'd like to offer you. Go ahead, Nancy. Tell them all about that. Well, uh, both Steve and I uh, are going to give you a 30-minute consultation. Now, you can you imagine what we like individually? Because each of us, uh, you know, uh, in, when you look at what we charge for a consultation hour, uh, that's a $350 bonus. And yet, you know, the whole course is 347. So you're really getting double the value. You're getting personal consultation from each of us if you can take action immediately, and you're gonna get this amazing course. But again, this is, this is available to you through Friday at 5 p.m. And just understand that the reason we wanna do these consultations is not only to understand your business better, but understand what your employee's uh, management situation is so that when we, when you get involved in the course, we can better tailor it to your needs uh, as we go along so that we address those problems with the, the, the strategies we uh, build throughout the course or that we teach throughout the course that is. So, you know, we want to understand what you're going through so that we can make this course super effective for you. Additionally, we want to understand, understand your business in general so that if there's other ways we could be of a service to you, then we can offer some ideas that'll help you be even more profitable and more successful in your business. So here's the thing, you gotta register now. You see the link on the screen, pretty straightforward. We're gonna leave it up here for a few, few seconds here. Write it down, uh, Take go visit this link after we get done with this presentation, get signed up. We promise it's gonna be well worth the investment. You're gonna get way more value out of it than what we're charging. And so I think it, it, you're, it's a no-brainer for you to get involved. Nancy and I have some really great material that we're going to share throughout this course. That's right. And again, there's some frequently asked questions that people often have. You know, although we've tried to address the issue of cost, again, Steve, why are we charging such a low fee? Because each of us alone is worth, you know, 12 times that amount. Look, at the end of the day, we're, we're here to be of service to you as coaches. And this is what we do. And for us, it's an opportunity for, for us to give back to the people that have invested time today on this webinar, show you that we're serious about assisting you. And ultimately, it allows us to show you how to implement systems that improve your profitability. Why would we want to do that at a lesser price? Because, hey, we're, we're so confident that this is going to work for you, that ultimately you may want to turn around and utilize our services even more in other ways. And we have that ability to do so, but we want to prove ourselves. We want to give you an opportunity to make it, make it a no brainer for you and get you into a process that makes you happy, makes your employees happy. And of course, validates everything that we're teaching here. And another issue that comes up is time. And again, um, I want to emphasize that although we will be delivering this course in the month of November, uh, the entire course will be completed in November, that it will be recorded and that you can revisit it and you know continue to learn repeatedly. So um, as far as the time, of course, we would love for you to be available live with us when, when we uh, get deliver the material, but you will be able to watch it again and again and again. Absolutely. And Steve, one other thing that often comes up is what about the fact that these people who are probably listening, they're seasoned, they may have taken previous training courses. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And here's the thing. You can always improve on your experience and you can always improve from taking a different uh, uh, set of information. Maybe not that different, but it's a, it presented a different way and it allows you to 
uh, more effectively implement a process that you may have started to put in place, but you didn't see a particular tweak that we teach throughout the course. You know, there are plenty of coaches, mentors out there that offer stuff like this. Here's the thing. You may have been through a process that has helped you, but learning from another perspective will only enhance your systems, your employee management systems, and only enhance your ability to be more productive and keep your employees in your company working for you as happy as a happy group of people that support your culture for a longer period of time. And that's really the goal here is for you to be able to keep your employees, keep the culture, make profits, and just really have a great working environment for you and your staff. Yeah. So this is for the manager who has who is managing employees, who may be some, somewhat stressed, may have one or two employees who are challenging, you know, would like to get the skills, the information, the know-how, the support. It's also for the manager who is, has the foresight to say, you know, I need these systems in place. Uh, we don't really have all these pieces put together and is thinking proactively and preventively. Absolutely. So guys, you see the link here again on the screen, write it down, visit, let's get registered before uh, Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, again, we promise to be well worth your time in investing in this course, and we look forward to seeing you uh, when the course starts next week. So get going right now. We'll send some follow-up information once you've registered, uh, give you the times and, and dates the courses will be, the course will be run over the next couple of weeks. And I, again, this is the first step to really putting it together a, an effective employee management system for your business. Great. So thank you again for investing your time today. Uh, feel free to contact, reach out to Steve or me with any questions that you have. Otherwise, we look forward to uh, working with you in our intensive employee management course. Absolutely. Thanks again so much, for everybody. And uh, we look forward to talking with you again soon. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye.